One minute left. We're tied at 68 in double overtime. Each team in the double bonus. Possession arrow favors Georgetown. Cincinnati ball. There's Kashmir right. Finds Gates. Turning on Sims. And Gates scores. Yancey Gates with 23. And Cincinnati leads by two. One timeout left for Georgetown. Boyas trail by a deuce. About a 10 second difference between game and shot clock. Sims calling for it. They get it to him. And he scores. Tied at 70 with 28.7 left. Cincinnati has two timeouts remaining. We'll see if the Bearcats use one here. Everybody on their feet at the Garden. 15 seconds left. Here's Kashmir right with 10. Right on the drive to the bucket. Got it off the window. And Cincinnati will call a timeout. Bearcats with the lead with 7.6 left. Uh, just guys playing some basketball. Uh, just trying to deliver in the moments that matters for their team. Yancey Gates has been virtually unstoppable when he's caught the ball in the post. And as important as the catch is the delivery. Nice soft bounce pass. The gather, the chin, the ability to go through multiple bodies. And then Henry Sims. They didn't call any contact on that end. They don't call it on this one. Henry Sims, degree of difficulty of that shot pretty hard. And then how about this? Kashmir Wright being played to his left. So he takes his left. And the Cincy bench knows that they've got an advantage with seven seconds left. All right, we've seen a ton of poise out of Georgetown. 7.6 to get it up the floor. We still have a timeout left. How yeah. do you handle this possession here? Here are the Hoyas. Well, and I, you know, again, I'll, I'll go back to what I said when since he had to cover some ground, you know, the kind of area real estate you can cover on the first pass is important because you want as much time at your disposal as possible when you get it into the front court. You don't have the time to run your offense and try to get through sequences here. Like Georgetown's a rhythm team, cuts and movement. You don't have time for that. And Jim Burr and Gene Sterator over the monitor. Got to imagine they're looking to see how much time is on the game clock. Maybe how, how many timeouts each team has here as well. And they just did confirm that Cincinnati does have a timeout. So that's what it was. It wasn't a clock issue, a timeout issue. Each team with a timeout, Georgetown ball. They're not going to guard the inbound pass here. 7.6 left. Cincinnati on top in double overtime. Here's Clark. Five seconds left. Got to hurry. Clark with three. Clark off the screen. Here's Sims. Puts it up. No good. And Cincinnati survives in double overtime. Georgetown went for the win. Boy, it seemed like it took a lot of time for Clark to get up the court, get it across the line. I'm not sure why I didn't go right at him, and then he danced a little bit, waiting for the screen up high. You'd like to have seen him gotten and attacked, and at least, even if he's slowing down once he crosses the front court to wait for the screen, more time if he would have pushed it initially. Uh, the seven, he catches it below the free throw line, and then he's sort of putting it between his legs. If he had pushed it here and then timed the screen, and they end up getting a challenge three. Probably, I'm guessing not what John Thompson had in mind there in terms of the shot selection. Cincinnati wins in double overtime, advances to play Syracuse tomorrow night in the semifinals. They had gotten a couple of buckets late. Sims in the high post, but not that time. Mick Cronin, congratulations. He moves on to the semis, and he's with Beth Mullins.